an awesome day. Praise God. I tried to visualize, which is almost silly, but I tried to visualize the sound of worship as it was going up through this ceiling and through the roof of this building on up into the glory world and tried to visualize it as the Lord looked down and he just filled those praises with his presence. You see, that's what he does when there is worship and praise to him. He just fills it with his glory and presence. And while I was worshiping, I said, oh God, I wish I knew how to worship you better. Hallelujah. I wish I knew how to worship you better. Praise God. I know what to do with my hands. I know what to do with my feet. But oh God, help me to know what to do with my heart and my spirit. Praise God. That's what reaches in. I can't jump all the way up there. I can't clap loud enough for it to get there. But my spirit can carry it all the way to the glory world. If I really worship him, if I really love him. Praise God. God bless you. You may be seated. I say with those who've already spoken, we're happy that you are here today. I hope that that means I'm really on today. <laughs> you can take that more than one way, can't you? <laughs> All right. But the Lord has been working in my heart with something for several days now, actually going into weeks, I think. And... Uh, I'm going to read a few passages of scriptures here, and we're going to see what the Lord might have to say to us today. I'm a pastor and always have been. I traveled for a little while, but I've always been a pastor. I was in my early 20s when I met the board to receive license, and they asked me, what my ministry was, and I said, I am a pastor. I never pastored a church, <laughs> only preached a few times, but I knew my calling before I ever met a board or received license of any kind. And I try to preach evangelistic every now and then, and I do succeed once in a while. But most of the time, both barrels are aimed right at you. And the Bible lets us to know that if you feed the saints, if you perfect the saints, they will do the work of the ministry. You meet more people before noon tomorrow than I'll meet in the next three years. I'm talking about this congregation collectively. Your lives will touch more people by noon tomorrow than my life will touch, I'm talking about on an individual basis, for maybe even years. So you see, that's the way the church multiplies. You don't look to the shepherd to have all the sheep. In fact, for as I know, shepherds don't have sheep. Uh, sheep have sheep. Sheep multiply if they are fed properly and if they are housed properly and if they're in good health. They just multiply. They just can't help it. They just multiply. That's nature. That's God. And that's God in the church. Well... Get your Bibles and turn to Psalm chapter 89, and we will read a few verses. You may stand, please, for the reading of the Word. Psalm 89 is where we'll be reading from. And I'll explain the first sentence in your King James Version. Mine's a King James Version, but it's also a Schofield. And uh, Schofield, New Schofield, has a few word changes 
Yours starts out in the 14th verse, justice and judgment. But when you read that in the literal translation, it reads righteousness and justice are the habitation of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Blessed are the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. In thy name shall they rejoice all the day, and in thy righteousness shall they be exalted. And everybody said amen to the word. And let's ask God to help us. We can do nothing without him. Father, right now we need your anointing. We need your help. You have anointed us, Lord, many years ago to preach the word of the Lord. But Lord, we need a special unction, a special liberty, a special flow of thought pattern. God, that would be from you, that would bless, instruct, and help the church of the living God. Without you, Lord, we can't bless. Without you, we can't help. But by you, Lord, souls can be saved and people can be fed. In Jesus' name we pray. All the people said amen. Put your Bibles down, if you will, and give the Lord a hand clap praise. you may be seated we live at a time and place where there are many many sounds you are hardly ever out of the reach of man-made sounds doesn't matter where you go where you stand if you will just listen long enough you will hear a man-made sound maybe it'll be a plane overhead a truck going by, something that man made, it is a sound. In fact, I've kind of titled uh, this hour and this day, Distraction. Distraction is the name of our times. It's just, uh, you know, you, in fact, around Christmas time and holiday times, that's one sermon I preach to you. Uh, the third chapter of Davis, Be Not Distracted. And we can so easily be distracted. And there are a million things that are trying to distract us today. Jesus said several times, He that hath ears, let him hear. I don't think the Lord was just talking about an airplane going overhead, or a truck going by, or a motorcycle trying to outrun another one. I think he had something more important in mind when he said, He that hath ears, let him hear. Jesus is not opposed to sound, thank the Lord. But he likes noise of a particular kind. You know very well that Psalm 100 begins, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I, unfortunately, just about anybody can make noise. <clears throat> but the joyful noise or the joyful sound of spirit-filled people is something a little different. It's a different sound. Amen. We know the difference but other people don't seem to know the difference. Have you ever heard anyone trying to mimic us, trying to make fun of us, and they just don't have it? <laughs> they can't say hallelujah like we say it. 
They can't say praise the Lord like we say it. It just doesn't sound the same. There's something a little different about it. And we understand the difference. They may not. But God also understands the difference. The sound of true worship is a special, special sound. Amen. And I thank God for the saints of God that know how to worship and glorify the Lord. Amen. I had a person in our church many years ago, and uh, uh, he was not really one brick shy of a load. <laughs> but uh, he didn't have some of the social graces that most of you have. He, he lacked some of the social graces, but he was a good man and a good supporter, and he loved me, and uh, he sat on the front seat, and, and he supported me as I preached, and so on and so forth. And I made a grave mistake one day. I complimented him for his support, and I shouldn't have, because the very next service, he said amen when he shouldn't have said it. He said it too loud, and he was boisterous, and it just didn't ring true. And because I had complimented him, and because I had bragged on him a little bit, he was really going to do it. But instead of blessing the congregation, you know what it did? It just kind of threw a blanket over the congregation because it didn't have the right kind of sound. It wasn't in tune. Praise God. You see, when we are in tune with the Spirit, praise God, when the Spirit is doing it, when the Spirit is prompting it, it sounds right, and it is right, and it blesses. But when it's not in tune, it doesn't really bless that much. That may be the reason that the Lord taught us through the apostle that all things must be done decently and in order. Everybody say order. order. God wants order. Praise God. Let me give you an example. Right over here, 10 of you could have a wonderful prayer meeting right in the middle of this this section right over here. I'm sure you could have a wonderful prayer meeting right now. And over here, four of you could have a good Bible lesson. Just get your Bible out and go to teaching somebody a good Bible lesson. Uh, is there anything wrong with a prayer meeting? No. Is there anything wrong with a Bible study? No. But it's not time for a prayer meeting and it's not time for a Bible study. It's time for a sermon. Praise God. God has a church, a corporate church. And when they come together, it's not the individual, it's the church that he wants to bless. Praise God. And he wants us to be able to hear that sound. Do you know the sound? And if you want a title for this message, that's what it is. Do you know the sound? that the Spirit makes? Do you know the sound of the leading of the Spirit? Do you know the voice of Jesus Christ? Do you know what He is saying to the church? Do you understand and do you feel in your spirit what is happening as God moves through His church? Praise God. It is so important I have got you backed up right now, don't I? Praise God. I've got you on your heels. Well, thank God I intended to get you on your heels right now. Because, you see, you need to understand some of these things. Some of these things need to be uh, spoken to you. And you need to know that God cares about the church collectively. Amen. And you will notice when the Spirit really moves, all of the church worships. 
Praise God. Oh, there might be a dud somewhere, but don't worry about the duds. They're okay. But when the Spirit moves, those that feel and those that know and those that hear the Spirit, they're worshiping. Hallelujah. We're always trying to draw in the duds. Praise God. If we just worship enough, sometimes we can get them going. Praise God. And they will get blessed. Praise God. But you see, that's the way God deals with his church. In the text, you will notice verse 15. Blessed are the people that know the joyful sound. Hallelujah. There is a joyful sound that the people of God hear that no one else seems to recognize. The disciples were in a boat out on the Sea of Galilee, and they were rowing and toiling, and nothing was happening right, and nothing was going right for them, and they were in the middle of that uh, little ocean, if you want to call it that, and and nothing was really happening. And then suddenly, uh, Jesus came walking by, and, and they were terrified. But then Jesus spoke, and when Jesus spoke, Everything settled down. He said, it's, it's I. Be not afraid. Everything is going to be okay. Praise God. When Jesus spoke, be not afraid, they knew that voice. And what a beautiful voice that was. Praise God. Some of you need to know that sound today. Some of you need to attune your ears to the sound of the Spirit today because your little boat is rocking. Your little boat seems hard against the waves. It seems like that nothing is going right in your life. But I promise you, if you will attune to the Spirit, if you will stop listening to the wind, if you will stop listening to the roaring of the waves, if you will stop listening to the voice of those around you, and you will attune your ear to the voice of the Spirit, you're going to hear the voice of Jesus Christ, and He will speak peace into your life. He will speak peace into your storm. He will speak peace into that thing that is bothering you so desperately. I promise you all you have to hear is him to say, be of good cheer. It is I. And when Jesus comes on the scene, everything is going to be all right. He's going to get in your boat. He's going to calm the sea. And you're going to be where you're supposed to be. One of the wonderful things I see about that uh, scripture is that when Jesus got in the boat, you know what the scripture said? It said suddenly they were at the shore. And they had been toiling all night. They'd been trying to get there. And they couldn't get there. And they were terrified. And there was wind. And there was storm. And there was wave. But Jesus got in the boat. And suddenly they were at the shore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, I love that. Praise God. Have you ever worked at something, toiled at something, struggled with something? And then one day, one day just suddenly, there it is. Praise God. It's done. Hallelujah. Oh, you need to hear his voice. Oh, all those other sounds. All those other things drowned out his voice. John chapter 10, Jesus I paraphrase just a little. I said, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger will they not follow. Praise God. Do you know the sound of your shepherd? Do you understand the voice that is calling to you? Praise God. The Lord is talking. He's talking. Praise God. The Lord is always talking. Praise God. It's we that need to be listening. Hallelujah. Praise God. Did you ever have a serious problem and struggle with it for a while? 
and you didn't know which way to turn. And you went into your closet of prayer and you opened your Bible and you began to read and suddenly a scripture just jumped out and grabbed you. And sometimes you begin to weep and, and shake and, and just say, oh, thank God. But then it dawned on me one day, that scripture was there all the time. <laughs> all the time I was struggling, all the time I was trying so hard. The promise was already there. It was there. I just wasn't listening as much as I should have been listening. I wouldn't have had quite so much struggle. In 1 Kings chapter 19, you'll find Elijah running from Jezebel, which I guess is not such a bad thing to do. <laughs> However, uh, his situation was a little bit different. Uh, his head was supposed to be cut off by Jezebel by noon the next day. And so he thought it was time to go. And so he went. And he ran and he ran and he ran. And he got halfway and ran out of strength and lay down and wished to die. And, and well, the Lord sent an angel and fed him and said, go ahead. And he went on to the Mount of God, went in a cave, sat down and thought, oh, <laughs> I'm in bad shape. What a day. That old gal is after me. And it's, it's, it's just about over. And... But the Lord asked him a question, what are you doing here? The Lord, you ought to know what I'm doing here. I'm saving my life. And the Lord said, I've got something to say to you. And suddenly, uh, there was a, a tremendous wind that came by. But God wasn't in the wind. It seemed that he, he seemed to know that. And then there was an earthquake. And the rocks began to rent. Nothing happened. And then there was a fire that came by, just a mighty fire. And then after the fire, there was a still, small voice that came to Elijah. Praise God. I said, Elijah, what are you doing here? And he poured out his soul to the Lord. But, oh, I like what the Lord did. The Lord didn't answer his complaint at all. You know, I have finally learned to stop complaining to God. I'm reading a book right now that tells you, go ahead and complain to God. Go ahead and fuss with God. Go ahead and do anything you want to. And if you want to believe that, go ahead. <laughs> but I found out that complaining to God and fussing with God and blaming God never got me anywhere at all. In fact, the Lord never answered his complaint. He told how bad it was. He told how that she's killed all the prophets and she's killed everybody and now she's after me. And the Lord said, get up and go do what I have commissioned you to do. Hallelujah. Well, Lord, aren't you going to pour in a little oil? Aren't you going to rub in a little salve? Don't I get a little uh, pity here? Don't I, don't I get a little... Sun? No, no, just get up and go on and do what I commissioned you to do. Hallelujah. Amen. And so he did. And what a great prophet that man was. Hallelujah. Because he heard the still, small voice of the Lord. Do you hear it? Can you hear it? Praise God. I've walked in some homes. Electronics blaring. Kids screaming. Mothers yelling. Fathers yelling. If God wanted to say something, he wouldn't be able to get a word in edgeways. Oh, God. We are filled with sound. 
noise. But we need to hear that still, small voice. That's the reason we tell you daily, you need a daily time alone with Jesus Christ. Oh, we're going to pray here corporately. And every Monday and Tuesday night, we've been praying. And that is scriptural, and we're supposed to do that. But you are also supposed, also supposed to have a daily time with Jesus Christ. Amen. He may have something he wants to say to you, and he can't say it while you're darting in and out in traffic. And he can't say it in the noise of all of the offices and, and places where you go and, and the, around the people that you're around. But when you get alone with him, oh God, when you have left Jezebel way behind, we've left all the other sounds way behind, and you're alone with Jesus Christ, something good will come to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am amazed at how wonderful it is to be alone with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I've told you before that the morning hours belong to me and the Lord. And, and I, I resent anything that breaks up that time. I know sometimes it has to be. Sometimes I have an appointment. I have to make it. But I resent the time that I lose my time with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You've got to hear. Do you know the sound? Praise God. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, the apostle writing to this church said, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. What a verse, what a verse. Do you know the sound of truth? He said, I marvel that you're so soon removed from the Lord. Amen. And they didn't have radio back then. They didn't have bookstores and print presses like we have now. They didn't have all the religious magazines that we have now. They didn't have the TV broadcast, your TV church. Amen. Somebody said the other day, I heard, I don't go to church anymore. My church is my TV. You got a rotten church. Right. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, have mercy. Sister Davis found a little article. One of you gave her a magazine and found a little article. And it was really nice. It was about a dysfunctional family. And... Uh, they invited uh, some uh, other families in to visit with them. And they visited and enjoyed each other for a little while. But, but things began to get out of hand. And things began to be uh, as they shouldn't be. And things were said that shouldn't be said. And things began to happen that, that shouldn't happen. And uh, this uh, uh, owner of the house and the master of the house began to think, this is not what I planned. This is not the way it's supposed to be. And they talked about it a little bit. But it kept getting worse and, and worse. And things were happening. And, and even before their eyes right there, it was getting worse and worse. And they said, we are going going to have to do something and so they turned off the TV come on come on praise God they invited all kinds of garbage and gunk and it got worse and worse until they said we can't invite these people in anymore and so they turned off the TV. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there are some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which ye have, or we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so 
say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be a curse. Give the Lord a hand clap praise. I don't care if it was an angel. I don't care if it was a doctor of the law. I don't care who it is. If they preach any other gospel than that is laid down in this old book, you must let it be a curse. We must hear and have an ear for the truth in our day. Praise God. The airwaves are filled with garbage. The airwaves are filled with error. The airwaves are filled with lies. And yes, the internet is filled with garbage. And it's filled with lies. It's filled with false doctrine. And you better hear an ear. You better have an ear for the truth. You better be able to listen and tell the difference in truth and error. Praise God. You see, I've already read to you, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And there is a certain ring to the truth. There is a certain validation that the truth has that the error and false doctrine does not have. You hear it and you go to the word of God. And if it doesn't match, cast it aside. He said, even if an angel from heaven comes to you and you have a dream or you have a vision, if it's not the gospel that is here in this book, let it be accursed. Amen. Let that angel be accursed. Oh God, thank God for an ear that loves the truth. Praise God, praise God. Truth will save you. Truth will deliver you. Truth will take you to the glory world. Error will cause you to be lost. You see, it's not just a little mistake. Error will cause you to be lost. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Well, when you know the sound, the scripture says, you will walk in the light of his countenance. Hallelujah. Would you like to walk with Jesus today? Oh, hallelujah. That word countenance means facial features. It means the look on a person's face that shows his nature or feelings. Hallelujah. Praise God. You see, the very nature of Christ, the very feelings of his heart is what we walk in. We walk in the countenance, the light of his countenance. Glory to God. You know the Bible tells us that when we're looking for God, you know where you're going to find him? When you're looking for the knowledge of God, you're going to find it in the face of Jesus Christ. You're going to find it in the countenance of Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus walked by the seashore and called Peter, James, and John to follow him. And they were privileged to walk with Jesus. Literally walk up and down the shores of Galilee and up and down the streets of Jerusalem with him. But walking with him... They received a privilege that is above the norm. They walk with him all the way to the Mount of Transfiguration. And they saw him in his glory. They saw him as his face and his raiment shine brighter than any laundry or floor could would make it. They were able to behold the glory of the Lord. I've often wondered about the Apostle Paul. I wish he could have revealed to us the things that he saw as he was caught up into the third heaven. 
And there was able to actually behold and see and hear the glories of the Lord. He said, it's not lawful for man to even utter those words. They cannot be uttered. They're too wonderful. What a wonderful privilege it is to walk in the light of the countenance of Jesus Christ. Amen. So filled with the power and glory of the countenance of Jesus Christ. Peter walked up and down the streets of Jerusalem and just his shadow passing over people. They were healed. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You want to get close to Jesus? Praise God. You want to know him? You want to hear his voice? You want to sense the pulse of his heartbeat. Do, do you know the sound? Praise God. Do you know the sound of his heartbeat? God give us spiritual stethoscopes that we could hear the very heartbeat of God. What God could do with you as a church, what God to do with us and me, if we can just hear the very heartbeat of God. Hallelujah. The disciple John, as far as we know, lived until the last apostle other than himself was dead. He wrote the Gospel of John. He wrote 1st and 2nd, 3rd John. They were personal letters. He wrote the great book of Revelation because he could hear the very heartbeat of God. He could hear that sound. Praise God. If you can hear the sound of his heartbeat, you know what his nature is like. You know what his will is. You understand how he feels. You understand what he's saying. Oh, I would to God that we could understand what he's saying. My God, this precious book we call the Bible is so often taken so lightly. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I know the Bible says that, but it doesn't matter. Stephen looked at that council and he said, you receive the word of God dispatched by angels. And if an angel would come down in your bedroom in the morning and wake you up and give you a letter. You would read that letter. You would love that letter. You would call me. You would call everybody you know. You'd call the newspaper. You'd ask the angel to stay long enough that you could take a picture of him so I can prove it. Oh, the things we would do if an angel brought us a letter and placed it in his hands. What do you think this book is? What, what do you think this is all about? This came from heaven. This came from the mouth of God. And pages are not to be cut out with a pin knife like one of the kings of Israel did. He came across things he didn't like and he took a pin knife and sat in front of the fireplace and he cut the word of God up and burned it in the fire. And people are doing exactly that today. They're saying, I don't like that page. I don't like that chapter. 
I don't like what he said here. And so the pin knife takes it out. Oh God. Oh God. If we can have an ear to hear the very heartbeat of God. If we can understand what the Spirit is saying to the church today. That was the cry in the book of Revelation. The seven churches, five of which were half backslid and had problems. And the, the cry was, oh, that the, the church would hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And over and over again, oh, that the church could hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. God, I don't know where we would fit in those seven churches. I hope that at least we can fit in the Philadelphia church. And I preached to you about it not too long ago, that the Lord said of that church, thou hast a little strength. And every time I read that, it condemns me that the Lord had to look down to the best church in all of Asia and say to that church, you have a little strength. And it condemns me. Oh God, if the best church only has a little strength, where do we fit? Where do we fit? Oh God, give me an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Praise God. He said, if you know the joyful sound, if you know the joyful sound, you're going to rejoice in the name, praise God. In thy name shall they rejoice all the day. In thy name shall they rejoice all the day. Oh, church of the living God, let me preach to you for a few minutes. It's time we fall in love with Jesus Christ. Isn't it, church? Come on. Isn't it time we fall in love with Jesus Christ? Hallelujah. For there is no other name under heaven. Praise God. There is no other name under heaven. It doesn't exist given among men whereby we must be saved. It's the name of Jesus in this generation or it's being lost. It's the name of Jesus in the church today or you are not the church of the living God. Praise God. But I want to tell you what's happening. I want to tell you what's going on. Not too long ago, a young lady was given the privilege to pray at her graduation. But when they read her prayer, they noticed that she had the name of Jesus in it. And they said, you can pray, but you can't say Jesus. I read not too long ago where I forget what state it was, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the clergy was invited to pray the opening prayer of the Congress. They read his prayer and they said, you can't say Jesus. You got to take Jesus out of it. You can say Lord, you can say God, but you can't say Jesus. And that must have been in Russia. Surely that was in China. Surely that was somewhere else. It couldn't be here in the United States of America where religious liberty is so wonderful. You know what? There is a hatred of the name of Jesus by the devil and by all his cohorts around the world. And they're going to do everything they can do to snuff out the name of Jesus Christ. It started 2,000 years ago when the disciples were called in and they were beaten and until their backs were bleeding and they said you can go and do anything you want to but don't teach or preach in the name of Jesus church we need to lift up Jesus we need to lift up Jesus we need to glorify Jesus 
It's all right to say Lord. It's all right to say God. But Jesus is his name. Jesus is his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You see, and, and uh, I don't want to offend anyone here today, and I don't have time to teach a long Bible lesson on the name of Jesus, but let me just pass it by you. I was called to speak to a, a group of preachers one time, and they didn't believe what we believe, and they didn't want to baptize in Jesus' name. And I said, you're not obeying the command. You are mimicking the command. You are saying, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, which are not the name of the Father is. And if you never find out what the name of the Holy Ghost is, you have no excuse. You know what the name of the Son is. Praise God. Praise God. The only name. The only name. The only name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Forgive me for being so forceful in this, but I got stirred up when they said, you can pray, but you can't say Jesus. Well, I don't want to pray anywhere I can't say Jesus. <laughs> he's my Lord and my Savior. He's everything to me and he's everything to you. And we're going to hold him up. And we're going to lift him up. That is the only name. There is power in that great name. You know we are instructed in scripture that whatever we do in word or deed to do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Philippians 2.10 says, At the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Give the Lord a hand clap praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> uh, the evangelist Mark, Luke, and Matthew all recorded the words of Jesus. And this is what he said. Ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Jesus told his disciples. He said, it's going to be my name that's going to be the separating thing. See, you'll be hated of all men for my name's sake. But let's lift up Jesus for my salvation in his, is in his name. Your salvation is in his name. The answer to my prayer is in his name. Everything that I have. And everything I hope to be is in his holy and righteous name. Praise God. Praise God. And we come to the end. Do you know the sound? On the way to church this morning, I finally reached over and touched the button to turn off the radio. I usually listen to the news while I drive. But... It was irritating me. It was sound, sound I didn't want to hear. It was noise, but not a joyful noise. I turned it off, and I talked to the Lord. God, we need you. We need to hear that sound. We need to know that voice. And it's a still small voice. A lot of times, 
we miss it because we're in too much of a hurry. Praise God. From the very birth of Christ, when Jesus was born that first day, until he ascended into the glory world, everything he did was for you. Not for himself. Not for himself. Everything he suffered, everything that happened to him was for you. And the scripture says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. What a savior. What a savior. Praise the Lord. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Every action and every bit of suffering was so that you could be blessed. He said he was not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. They tell us in a congregation this size, you can be sure that there will be people that will go to hell from a congregation this size. I wish that I could preach to you enough. I wish I could convince every one of you so deeply that not one person would fail God. Not one person would go to hell from this congregation. But unless you hear him, unless you hear him, unless something happens, in your soul, you won't make it. Jesus said he came to seek and to save that which was lost. He's always trying to save somebody. He's always trying to save you. From the birth to the death to the resurrection and to the ascension, it was ever been for you and for me. I hear his voice. I hope you do too today. Would you stand please? What a beautiful Savior we have today. He communicates with us. He wants us to hear that voice, whether it be a scripture, a song, a testimony silence and prayer and a moving of the Holy Ghost he wants you to hear his voice and the first part of his voice is I've come the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor to bind up the brokenhearted Preach the acceptable year of the Lord to those who need him. That's what it's about here this afternoon. Oh, the love of God, it cannot be measured. As we begin to sing in just a moment, I want to invite you to come. I don't know why you will be coming. That's your business. Some of you need to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Some of you have been coming to this church too long not to be filled with the Holy Ghost. This is a Holy Ghost filled church. Praise God. You need the Holy Ghost. Whether you know it or not, you want the Holy Ghost. You want Jesus Christ dwelling within you. You need the Holy Ghost. Some of you need deliverance. Some of you are staggering along. You're moving, but you're staggering along. Oh, the Lord wants to strengthen you today. He wants to help you. Why don't you let this be the day? Hallelujah. As we sing, it's time to come. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let the rain your presence fall on me. That's what he wants to do.
Bring somebody with you if you can. <laughs> 